What is up, everybody? Jester here. And recently, I've had a lot of questions in the comments and in different places about nanites and how to get them. Well, we're going to start answering those questions today in part one of my two-part Everything I Know About Nanite series. Today, we're going to focus on runaway mold and how it's a really, really easy way to get nanites for days once you find the location. No time to waste. Let's jump right into the video. First off, I think it's important to go ahead and show you why you want nanites in the first place. And most of the reason is going to be upgrades. You can go to the four different vendors for different things on the space stations, and you can check out all the different upgrades they have for all your different equipments, whether it's your exosuit or your multi-tool or your exocraft. Also, nanites can now be used to upgrade class when it comes to your multi-tool. So you find that really cool C-class multi-tool. Using nanites, you can get that all the way up to S-class. Same goes for your starship. You can actually get upgraded from C-class all the way to S-class if you have the nanites available. So you don't have to wait so darn long for the perfect ship to come along. Also on the Space Anomaly, you can unlock these trees with all the different vendors using nanites so you can get better weapons, make yourself a stronger player. This is also going to apply to the construction tree that we talked about in the last video when it came to stasis devices. And this way you can get everything unlocked that you're gonna to need to craft all the things that you want going forward in the game. So in short, nanites are pretty darn important when it comes to No Man's Sky. As far as finding these deposits, known as curious deposits that contain the runaway mold, you're gonna have two major methods. One is the low and slow flying method over any given planet. And uh, we're gonna get into more about how much of a struggle this was to find here in a minute. But uh, this method I don't prefer because it, 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 the things can hide behind terrain and you don't always see them. I would much rather walk the planet and what I like to do is go in a kind of a northeast or southeast or northwest or southwest direction as Hello Games likes to put things pretty linearly on a north-south or an east-west type of axis. So I feel like going northwest would give you a really nice kind of a cross section and a better way to see a little bit more terrain and maybe even find them a little bit quicker. Now, again, the problem is they're very difficult to find. They don't appear on every planet. And uh, again, I'll get into more of that in just a minute because it's not really a rant against the other stuff I've seen. It's just more of, I think Hello Games has changed the parameters. But if you guys are diligent enough, eventually in one of your searches, you'll hit your visor and you'll find one of these. This is the three star curious deposit. This took me just hours and hours and hours to find. But once I did finally find it, I realized something was a little bit different because in all my research, it seemed like 15 to 20 was a pretty normal size. This deposit actually has 26 pieces. So I knew this was gonna be the spot I was gonna build and uh, that was pretty much it. Now I wanna preface this little bit by saying that I have nothing but respect and admiration for the people that make the content they make, whether it be a Reddit post or a YouTube video. Uh, but I feel like a lot of the information on this topic that's out there right now is out of date. And I, I feel like the reason for that's probably either this update that just happened or the last one and Hello Games changed something and didn't decide to put it in the patch notes about the way these deposits appear. But none of it seemed to make any sense anymore. Some people will tell you, go to a three-star system and it'll be everywhere. Some people say, no, 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 no. Go to a one-star system, it'll be everywhere. Some people say, oh, you got to look for the right type of planet. To me, none of that seemed to matter. I found mine in a one-star system on a fungal mold planet. And uh, I went just to be thorough and investigated every other planet in the system, and I couldn't find one. I spent an hour each on every planet, could not find another curious deposit. That doesn't mean they weren't there. That just means that I couldn't find them. So I challenge you guys to come to this system. I'll give you the coordinates at the end of the video and uh, find me, find them in these other planets. Prove me wrong because I would love to have a bunch of bases with runaway mold in this system or even on the planet I found it on. But the only thing I ever seemed to find in the three star category was sac venom. And uh, that's definitely not what we were looking for. So, you know, just be diligent and keep looking and do your very best to stay on task. And eventually you are going to find these deposits. With all of my diligent searching finally being over, it was time to build the base. And the small problem I ran into was no power hotspot. And uh, that turned out to not be such a big problem because all I really needed to power was a portal. So just a couple of solar panels and a couple of batteries, not a big deal. And the build ended up going pretty smoothly. If you guys would like to see these builds live, come over and join my kick. The link is in the description and uh, I'd love to see you there. Follows are completely free. All that being done, the base was finally ready to go. Uh, as you can see, we created kind of a funnel for everything to come down to a small shooting platform. 
and uh, we're going to get into more of that here in just a minute but uh, i'm pretty happy with the base and again kick follows are free guys come on over and check it out with everything finally ready i realized i wanted to do something fairly scientific i also figured as you can see here that having all the upgrades for your multi-tool that includes the optical drill that includes the advanced mining laser was probably going to make a difference so i made sure i had everything all fixed up with that with all that being done it was finally time to start creating some tests so that i could figure out exactly how much this was going to yield and how quickly we could get it done before i could do a real scientific test i needed to figure out the limits of my farm so what I did start off by just shooting all the curious deposits, all 26 of them. This also gave me a chance to test my design for the base, which worked out great. In the end, I ended up with 17,736 runaway mold, which I felt like was quite a bit. But then I needed to know exactly how long it would take to refine. As it turns out, a full stack of 9,999 takes 20 minutes. Now we have our information. With only having the one deposit, it created two new problems for me. Number one, you have to go at least a thousand units away from these deposits to get them to respawn. The second problem is with a 20 minute refining time, I knew that five refiners was just not gonna be enough. And not that I'm against glitch building in any way, but I like to keep everything on the level for the videos. I don't even duplicate when I'm making the videos. So I needed to figure out a solution. So that's what I did. And that solution ended up being pretty simple. All I needed to do was go to the top three bases on my list and make sure they had five refiners in them. This takes me a thousand units away and it now gives me access to 20 refiners I can use for the test I wanted to run. As you can see here, I started with 14 nanites. This test is gonna be a one hour test. So I started shooting and then after I shot everything, I would put it in the refiners, teleport back and forth, so on and so forth. Now I decided that I only wanted to do this test for one hour. So with a 20 minute refining time, I stopped shooting the curious deposits at 40 minutes. This way it tells you exactly what we get with a one hour test. And I gotta be honest, my mind was kind of blown when I finally looked and saw I had 57,698. Take away the 14, that, that's, it, it's an amazing result in my opinion. I had no idea that this could be this lucrative this quickly. And remember, this is actually one hour. Had I continued to shoot for that one hour, I'd still have more cooking right now. But I felt like scientifically, this was the best way to go about making this test. Portal coordinates for this base are at both the bottom left and the top of your screen here. And I'm sorry they're a little fuzzy, but I haven't figured that out quite yet. But I think you can make everything out. Feel free to come to this planet, make your own base, or you can use mine. Just make sure you've got access to plenty of refiners when you do so. If for any reason you don't directly teleport to this planet, you're looking for planet Cope. It's a caustic planet, and I found the name of the planet to be absolutely hilarious, so I did not change it whatsoever. But feel free to come here at any time and search for more of these. Again, if you find my base, maybe try north-south. Again, if you're having any trouble, here are the planetary coordinates, plus 16.57 by plus 3.74, and you will find the Nanite Runaway Mold Farm. In the next video, I'm going to show you folks how to use those units that I showed you how to make in the Stasis Device Farm video and make nanites out of those. Don't worry, I'm shooting that right after this one, so it should be out this week sometime, and uh, stay tuned for that. And again, thank you guys for all the support. It really does mean the world to me, and it keeps me motivated, and hopefully this helped you guys out, and uh, you can make some nanites. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!